Hey guys, what's up? Brent Calmer from Blue Water VST. Thanks for joining me for this video, and apologies if I sound a little bit weird. It's uh, very early in the morning. I'm trying to get this done without waking up my neighbors. Uh, but this ensemble won't wait. This is Splitter. This is a granular beat production environment, and I just want to give you a few things to know about this when you get started. Uh, it's enormous fun to use. Basically what it does is it will take a loop, slice it up into 16 separate uh, slices, and then assign each of those slices to a separate slot here in the Splitter instrument. And these slots go from 1 on the left to 16, and you can see there is note information above each of these slots uh, that indicate which MIDI note will trigger that individual slot. Now everything else on the splitter interface has to do with controlling uh, the, the parameters for in it, the individual slot that you've selected. And you do that by just clicking on the number of the slot. Now you see as I do that, as I'm moving through here, a lot of these parameters will change on the fly because they're separate for each parameter. And that's what makes this ingenious is that Aside, after slicing up the loop, you can then completely alter the sound of these slices uh, and modulate them, as we'll see in, in, in a quick second. But if we get this snapshot going, we see that these slots map onto this sequencer. Uh, from, from left to right, 1 through 16 maps onto the sequencer from bottom to top. So every time we see a note being played down here in this bottom line, you see slot 1 is being activated. And the same goes for slot two. Now, one other thing that you might have noticed is that this chain, the, the splitter instrument changes dynamically based on what slot's being played. So, if slot three is being played at a particular point in time, it will show slot three's parameters only until another slot is triggered, and then it will move to that slot's parameters. So it can be a little overwhelming when you first start looking at the interface. You're seeing these numbers moving, things changing. Just keep in mind that you're, you, what you're seeing is the slot that is currently active, not uh, the individual slot that you've selected at a given time. But let's, let's uh, take another look at this sequencer. Now, one thing to note here is that you can draw in uh, notes just by clicking on a particular time period uh, and a particular slot to trigger that slot. You can also adjust velocity and length by right-clicking on the note that is already drawn in and moving up or down and left or, or right or left. And you see those faint lines behind the note begin to change as I do that. Now that, that vertical line is, of course, velocity. The horizontal line is note length. So that demystifies that for you. Now let's go back down to the splitter instrument and get a sense for what's going on here. Now, each of these samples will be sliced and assigned, but that's not to say that you can't uh, assign different samples to different slots. Now, so stay with me here, because this is an interesting function of Splitter. Right now what we're seeing is different slices of the same sample being played, but many of these snapshots, as you move through them, let's get to one that does this, you'll see move between different samples. Now this one does this. Right now we're playing really three different th three different slots. We're playing uh, the first slot, the third, and the fourth. One seems to have kind of this uh, bass line sound, and one is more of a kick drum. So if you click on slot one, what you see is that it's playing, under sample selection, playing sample eight. If you click on slot four, you see that it's playing sample 17. Now underneath, underneath all of this, of course, is a sample map, so you can go in here and audition these to hear how they sound. But this is a really interesting part of this, that you're not limited to a single loop, to slice up a single loop and use it, though that would still be pretty cool. You can actually move between loops and thus get kind of a multi-instrument sound. So very interesting stuff. Now if you wanted to make these all the same, you could of course just come to your sample selection and select say sample 4 for uh, slot 1 go to slot uh, 4 and also set that to sample 4 and then it would basically be playing the same sequence but it would be playing it now uh, confined to a single loop well now it looks like I missed one but you get the idea so that's it in a nutshell how it adjusts uh, how it moves between the sample slots and uh, occasionally, depending on your taste, the sample itself. But what else is going on here? Well, we see that for each of these slots, we have a variety of parameters. Now I'm going to reset this just so we can start from scratch. We have a sample offset, sample pitch, sample speed, and grain size. 
And something you notice here is that this grain size is really good, seems to be going berserk. And this is where the modulation comes in here. Now, aside from letting you slice up and assign each of the slices to different slots, uh, Splitter will allow you to modulate different parameters for each given slot based on what you want. And you can do this in two ways. You can use an LFO, uh, which is on board in Splitter, and you can also use a modulation sequencer. Now, the modulation sequencer can be accessed in the sequencer itself by clicking on modulation. And you see it here. All this does is it, uh, it, it sends modulation data to Splitter. It doesn't actually program notes. So let's come back down to the Splitter instrument and see what we have going on here. Right now we see that we have an LFO here, which is this kind of uh, between control and modulation. And it's set to a sine wave, and it has a certain speed here, which we can adjust here. And as, what you've noticed is that as I do that, this grain uh, data value is really, really starting to move more quickly. So we know those two things are tied together. And indeed, when we go over to the modulation section, look under grain, or LFO, we see that this is being sent to grain. So the sine wave in the LFO is adjusting the grain size dynamically, but bear in mind this is only for slot 4. So this is what accounts for this really kind of stretched out sound. Every Anytime we hear that really obnoxious kind of snare drum, what, obnoxious in a good way, I love it, it's big and in your face, uh, it, uh, it is adjusting that grain parameter on the fly. Now, if we wanted to change how, how much of that is happening, we could draw down the depth, for example, and then it would move it within a, a narrower range. And you see that, that it's really that grain parameter that gives you a lot of control over the texture of the sound. You could also adjust the speed. Now, again, you have to have the actual sample slot selected. Uh, sometimes what will happen is you'll be in here changing, it'll switch over to a different slot, and you'll find yourself changing uh, a slot that you didn't want to change. So, so that is with lowered speed. Now if we, we could really bring this down to get a sense uh, for how this changes during an individual hit. great for these kind of weird uh, dubby repeating sounds but that's just using grain now we also see that uh, the modulation sequencer which is uh, indicated by this SEQ down here right below the LFO our second modulation source is being sent to speed in other words uh, playback speed now in this case it doesn't look like there's any modulation data up here to be sent so I'm going to turn off the song sequencer and dial in some modulation data just by clicking and dragging in this field and kind of drawing in this wave here and then seeing if we can't get uh, then you see the speed starts adjusting there so really interesting stuff because what we're doing is a two-way modulation we're modulating the grain size by using the LFO which is a sine wave set to a very low speed and we're also modulating the, uh, the playback speed of the slot by using the modulation sequencer. So uh, very powerful in a small package. It's, it's really incredible what you can do with this. And these kind of serve to give you nice textures. It helps if you have uh, sounds that you already kind of want to use. And you can put them in here and, and add some kind of changes to them, make them change dynamically. You don't have to dial in super dramatic parameter changes, but it's just nice to know that you can get in there and, and change some of these dynamically. So this should get you going with this. Now, in a future video, what I'm going to show you how to do is uh, assign each of these to your separate MIDI parameters, uh, use them in machine. It's really a fun technique. But uh, if you're interested in seeing more about this, let me know. Uh, let me know if I missed anything. I undoubtedly did because there's so much to cover here. Uh, as a final thing, you can also reverse each slice. That's a nice parameter. But hopefully this will get you going on your own experimentations, own explorations with Splitter. And again, uh, this is probably the earliest video I've ever done. So thanks for sticking with me on this. Talk to you again soon.